Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These are art projects taught by the elementary art teachers from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. We hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because after all, visual arts are meant to be seen. Good day, Cape artists, and welcome back to another episode of The Heart of a Viking. This week, Mama Roo, Baby Roo, and all of us are traveling to Australia. Australia is an island surrounded by the Indian and the Pacific Oceans. Most Australians live near the coast because the center part of Australia is desert and rainforest. But for our project today, we're traveling to the desert, and we're going to a place called Papunya. So put on your thinking caps as we learn about the these incredible indigenous people. The Aboriginal culture dates back as far as between 60,000 and 80,000 years ago. There is no written language for the Australian Aboriginal people, so in order to convey their cultural stories, it is portrayed through symbols in their artwork. It was imperative to pass on information to preserve their culture. Indigenous art is centered on storytelling. It is used as a chronicle to convey knowledge of the land, events, and beliefs of the Aboriginal people. Aboriginal stories were painted on rock walls. There could be a combination of information and moral teachings behind each story. Children were taught right from wrong and the consequences of good and bad behavior. In 1971, a school teacher named Jeffrey Barden was working with the Aboriginal children in Papunya. He noticed that while the Aboriginal men were telling their stories, they would draw symbols in the sand. This gave Mr. Barton an idea. He encouraged the men to paint their stories onto canvas and board. This began the famous Aboriginal art movement. It was a major jump for the indigenous people. They were used to drawing to preserve their own history and teaching. They didn't think that what they did could be art and sold to the Westerners. Aboriginal artists need permission to paint their particular stories. They inherit the rights to those stories which are passed down through generations within certain groups. Aboriginal artists cannot paint a story that does not belong to them through family. Their art is complex and focused on long-term survival in the most hostile of environments. It has deep knowledge, spiritual meanings, cultural and practical survival teachings. Additionally, many people believe that the dots were used to hide information from the Westerners. The Aboriginal people became afraid that they would be able to see and understand their sacred private knowledge. The dots are used to obscure the secret symbols or iconography that's underneath. Since then, Australian Aboriginal art has been identified as the most exciting contemporary art form of the 20th century. Now there is much Aboriginal art being produced by hundreds of remote communities around Australia and even by urban Aboriginal artists. It has revitalized young Aboriginals' appreciation and understanding of their culture through the teachings of the elders through this medium. Westerners admire the outstanding beauty and meaning of the Aboriginal art, which has completely changed the relationship between the people and has helped build stronger bridges of understanding. Alrighty, Cape artists, I hope you enjoyed your travels over here to Australia, and I hope you're ready to begin our piece of artwork. It's an Aboriginal dot painting. So for this project, there are a couple choices that you need to make. So the first thing I needed to do was to choose whether I'm going to work on black paper or white paper. If you're going to work on black paper, you need a couple of different things than the kids who work on white paper. So let's go with the black paper first. If you're going to be working Working on black paper, you're going to need a white crayon or a colored pencil. You don't really need both, but a crayon or a colored pencil would work. Nice bright paint colors. Markers work okay. I use these markers. I can I use this purple one over here to make these dots, and they look pretty good. I can see the dots, but the paint looks a whole lot better. So markers will work but paint does work better. So any kind of liquid paint, I poured out some paint up here, uh, tempera paint or acrylic paint, either one would, would work really nicely. You're also gonna be needing a pencil to do some drawing with as well. If you're working on white paper, so I have some white paper under here, 
then you're going to need similar ideas. You're going to be needing the pencil as well. You're going to be needing possibly some markers, also some paints. And the way that we paint on both of these is to use Q-tips. So if you have some Q-tips, grab those. If not, using a paintbrush and using the bottom end of the paintbrush dipped into the paint will also help you make dots. Q-tips are a little bit better because they absorb some of the paint so you can make more dots before you have to re-dip and get some more paint. So Q-tips are best, but if you don't have a Q-tip, then the pen, uh, paintbrush end will work just fine. And then if you have a black Sharpie, we can use the black Sharpie on your white paper. All right, so let's make some decisions. You decide whether you're going to work on black paper or white paper. Your next decision to make is whether or not you're going to put a symbol in the middle that helps you recognize your family. So my family's last name is Minto, so I put a big M in the center like that. Or you could also make an Australian animal in the center of yours. So I chose to draw a little koala in the center of my white one. So if you're choosing the black paper, you could also choose to do the animal instead. I just happened to put the symbol for my last name on this one. But if you're using the white paper, you can also choose to not draw the animal, but put the symbol in the center by drawing the circle with your family's last initial in there. And if your family is like many families and you have more than one last name, you could also put the symbol, the circle symbol with both. So M and maybe if you have another family member that has an R for their last name, you could let them have their R in with the M. So I just had to make the M a little bit smaller. So boy, lots of decisions. So decision one, black or white paper. Decision two, are you making your family's last name in the center or are you making the animal in the center? I'd like for you to pause the video for a moment and I'd like for you to make your symbol in the middle for your family's name or draw a picture of the um, Australian animal that you would like to draw. All right, so here we are. So the next step for your piece of artwork is if you're working on white paper, you're going to outline your entire drawing with a black permanent marker. If you are using the black paper, I'd like for you to do the exact same thing, except I'd like for you to use your white crayon or colored pencil, whichever one you had. So all of us right now should be outlining. No matter what you drew, whether it was one of my Australian animals or if you drew the symbol in the center, starting on the animal or the symbol, I'd like for you to divide the background space, so that's the space that's all around, I'd like for you to, to divide the background space into a couple of different sections. So by me drawing these two lines, I've created one little section right up here. If I add another line here, I've created an additional section right there. Aboriginal artists, they were worried that other people, whether it was the Westerners or people in other tribes, would learn the secrets and traditions of their tribe. So they would hide pictures within their artwork. So in our little spaces that we've created, I'd like for you to draw a symbol or a picture of something that's important to you and your tribe. So your tribe is your family. So I'm going to think of a couple of different things that are important to me and my tribe and I'm going to draw them here using my pencil. Thank you. 
Okay, so you're lucky you get to see my secret symbols that are hiding underneath. Now I have to decide how secret I want to keep them. If I want to keep them very secret, I'm going to leave them just with pencil and begin to put dots on top of them. If I want them to be not so secret, I could use my Sharpie and trace them and outline them. Or if I'm drawing on my black paper, I could use my white crayon to trace them and outline them. And if I want them to be even more noticeable and not very secret, I could either grab my crayons and colored pencils and even color them in. I would not use the washable markers for coloring them in because if we put paint on top of that, it's gonna make a mess. Crayons and colored pencils would be best if you're gonna be doing the coloring option. I'm gonna leave this one just pencil and just begin with my dots. So I need my paint and I need some Q-tips. All right, so as you can see with this Q-tip, I've used two ends for two different colors. So I'm gonna start with red, just tip, just dab that into the red and begin making dots. Now the Aboriginal artists are very precise. As they're making their dots, they try to keep their dots in a row. This is hard work. It is tricky to keep the dots in this perfectly nice straight row. So do the best you can, but it looks so much better if you are able to stay in a nice row as you make your dots. There. Okay, so now you can see how my symbol that I had hidden underneath of there is still visible, but it's pretty well hidden. Now the other option, instead of using paint, you could use markers. So I'll show you the next space using a marker. Now I have a couple of choices with this guy. I'm still going to keep my... Um, my dots in a row, but I am actually like drawing little circles and coloring them in. I'm using sort of the side of my marker so that my dots are pretty large here. If I want my dots to be smaller, this is the tool you want to use because I could stand this guy up, use just the tip and make some really tiny dots. So that's kind of a cool option when you're using the markers is you can get different sized dots. So I think I'll finish this space off with a pattern of the big dots with a little row of dots in between. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the difference between using the markers and using the paints. Whichever you prefer is perfectly fine with me or even make a pattern of them, whatever you decide. I'm going to finish these up and then I'll be right back with you. All right, so there we have it. There's our finished Aboriginal dot painting. Now, you do have one other choice, this is to decide whether or not to put the dots or to leave it blank. So the koala right now is blank. That means it's just the outline drawing. There's nothing inside of it. It's not colored or no dots in there. Or like on this one, you could choose to put dots in that space. So it's really up to you if whichever you, whichever way you'd like to do it. I think I would like to put dots in mine and you can use true to life colors. So on the tree, I could put brown dots or you could choose to make it unusual colors. I could have made this a pink tree or maybe a purple tree. So the last option is to put dots if you want to in the drawing that's in the center of your work of art. Okay, 
So now that I'm done with the tree, I also want to use brown for the koala, but I don't want it to look the same. So what I think I'm going to do is just make larger dots on the koala than I did on the tree. Alrighty. And the last thing I think I want to do, I really like the way that it looks, but I really wish you could see my koala bear a little bit better. So I think I'm going to grab a brown colored pencil and just put a little bit of brown in my koala. Alrighty, that looks fantastic. Okay, so I'm so glad I did that. I wasn't planning on doing that colored pencil. However, as I was uh, making the dots on the koala, I felt like it just needed a little bit of something else. So that's the best thing about art is that it's always changing. And if you think you have a great idea for doing something, go ahead and do it. I'm sure it will look fantastic. All right, so I hope you enjoyed making your Aboriginal art. Whether you made the version that has the koala bear or an emu or some other Australian animal in it, or if you made the version that has the symbol for your family's last name in the center, I hope that you were able to come up with some cool things that you and your family do together or that you people in your family enjoy. And I wonder, and I can't wait to see how well you hid your symbols. If you made them kind of hidden or if you're letting other people see them. So I hope you had a great time making your Australian Aboriginal art with me today. I will see you back here tomorrow at the heart of a Viking.